Good day, good day everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. Today we are going to be taking another look at the Season 2 portal, specifically at the 5 star legendary blue hero, Doodle, the visionary drifter. So Doodle is available for summons as we saw from the Neon City portal. It does have some of the better odds running around with a 1% chance for a featured hero and a 0.6% chance for a non-featured hero. Um, what that translates to in reality is if you were to do 100 summons in this portal, you would have a 63.3% chance of getting either of the featured heroes and a 45.2% probability of getting one of the myriad of unfeatured heroes in this portal. <laughs> Doodle himself, he was added to Puzzle Combat back in July of 2022 as part of the uh, ever going drip feed of new heroes into old portals. Um, it's a uh, strategy that they've been using since, you know, season two of Empires and Puzzles. So it's been going on for ages now um, as a way of keeping you summoning in the same portal month on month. Uh, his artwork, I'll just flip over to my roster right quick uh, because I do actually have a copy of Doodle. Um, so there he is. So um, his artwork, he's, you know, a visionary drifter. Um, so, of course, naturally he's uh, got some sort of magical, um, like almost holographic sort of power to make fish, um, conjure them into into the air around him. So I don't know. Um, that's his artwork. I don't mind it. I think it's pretty cool, um, all things considered. But yeah, feel free to pause it if you so wish. <laughs> Heading back over to the portal and whoop, not flack, we're on doodle. Um, we can continue looking at his card. So he is a member of the hacker family, uh, which means that he's granted the opportunity to reflect status ailments back to the uh, caster, so the enemy caster, when they use their special skill. Uh, so that equates to a 15, 20, 25, or 30 percent chance uh, when there's two, three, four, or five heroes of the hacker family in a battle. They also gain a passive charge generation boost of three, five, eight, or 13 percent for the same number of heroes. Um, so yeah, it is kind of a nice little uh, setup. The reflective status elements is actually probably in my opinion, the best or second best. It's a tight race um, on the season two uh, family bonuses. Um, but yeah, it does have to be unique heroes. So it can't be two copies of Doodle. It's gotta be two different heroes, such as bringing along, uh, you know, Doodle and Mevanaya or Doodle and Sapphire as two examples. In terms of his personal stats, Doodle has got 708 attack, 755 defense, and 1506 HP. So there is a little bit of skewing going towards that defense and HP stat. Um, he is also a fair, he's an older hero. He's not super aged, but he does have slightly lower team power, um, which is a metric of their overall um, stat distribution compared to some of the new heroes. So, you know, you just take a look at Topaz at 742 um, compared to Doodle's 722. So, a little bit lower, but not substantially so. Uh, his charge speed is set to 44, which is average speed needing 11 tiles to charge or six ghosted tiles. The speed break is at 50 speed, which needs plus six. So you can do that using either of the blue uh, five-star speed guns in the game, um, both of which give you plus nine. So you've got the Regal Eyes and Magnum and the Ice Breath Saw. Both of those will get you that single break. A double break needs plus 14, so you can't actually do it, even combining the class node with a plus nine speed gun. So as a result, the plus 19 speed node on his class is not really relevant at all. On that note, uh, Doodle is a member of the Medic class, uh, which grants him the chance to heal all allies for 7% health uh, after receiving any damage. So it's a really handy perk uh, to have. It's free healing for all allies, um, and the damage can come from literally any source. Uh, so it can be tiles, it can be slash attacks, minions, you name it. If it does damage to him, it can trigger uh, the Medic healing spray. Downside is that it can only proc once a turn, uh, so it doesn't matter how many times you get hit, you can only do the healing spray once. In terms of an emblem path, I would probably recommend going a defense HP path in order to enhance his survival um, as a support hero overall. So uh, what that looks like, if we grab my, um, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> um, I almost said something that would have been very, very, um, inappropriate. If we grab uh, my copy of Doodle from that I've got in my roster and have a look at his talent grid, uh, you can see what I did on um, my copy. 
Uh, so you can see there, I've gone the defense and HP route each time. When there's a choice between defense and HP stats, my personal leaning is I go towards defense. Um, I That's just the way I tend to go. Um, so yeah, I've gone defense and HP at the top. Then we've gone defense and attack, defense and attack, defense over the two nodes there. Um, and then we keep wiggling our way down. And you can see there I have stopped at plus 18 because as I mentioned, the plus 19 node is not really relevant uh, to Doodle at all. Um, so yeah, I left him there at plus 18. So that's what I'd do. Um, feel free to pause it and screenshot if you wish or need to, but otherwise let's keep moving through. So his skill is titled Haptic Illusion and at level 10 skill and 44 charge speed, it will heal all allies for 390 health uh, with an additional 350 HP for allies who have less than 50% health remaining. All allies will then resist new status ailments for three turns. This is an effect that cannot be dispelled. And it, finally, he will cleanse all status ailments from all allies uh, at the time of casting his skill. So let's crack that open a little bit, uh, starting with the healing component. So. Um, where Doodle ranks in terms of the blue healers or blue healer and um, direct and pseudo direct healers, he comes in with a healing of 177 per tile. So this is assuming that he heals all five allies. Um, after needing 11 tiles to charge, that comes out at being 177 HP generated per tile. Uh, that is enough to rank him number three of the blue um, pseudo and direct healers. Uh, so he is pretty decent. On the basis of that heal alone, um, it's just the base heal that's gone into that. The second part, I haven't included that 350 additional health because it is situational. Uh, it doesn't always apply. Um, and even more rarely is when it applies to actually all of your allies. Most of the time you might trigger it and it'll go with one, two, maybe three allies. Um, it's very, very rare to get. Um, all five. So yeah, pretty decent healer. You can see there. The only ones that are really above him are Anastasia and Pavardi. Um, Pavardi is probably overtaken if you've got one hero that's got less than 50% health and you trigger that bonus. Um, Anna is a little bit higher up just because of the amount of um, direct heal and armor she does instantly. But yeah, better than most of the others. You know, you've got Booster, Variant, Bridget, um, Normal Bridget, Sideburn, so forth. They're all a little bit further down on that blue list. If we were to expand our uh, lifts out, I'm not going to show it, but if we did include all the 5-star and 4-star direct and pseudo healers, uh, he comes in at number 14 of the 52 options. So that's all of the minion makers, armor generators, and healers um, in the 4 and 5-star region. So 14 out of 52, it's not bad. It's in the upper 25-odd percent. Um, so yeah, pretty decent healer still. Um, and as I mentioned, that is just on his base healing. If we did look at Doodle in the lens of just direct healers, um, so we eliminate all of the minions and all of the armor generators, uh, he comes in at number 9 of the 16 direct healers in the game. Um, sorry, there's more than 16. No, there is 16. Um, 9 of the 16 available. So you can see him there, 177, comes in number 9. Behind heroes like Venus, Top Hog, um, Anastasia, up the top you've got Pika Variant, Jocosta, El Coyote, Doc Colton, and so forth. So those are sort of your upper echelon of direct healers. They're going to give you the most bang for buck. Um, but, you know, Doodle is middle of the pack. Um, and again, this is just his base healing. It, if you start triggering that situational healing, he does bump higher and higher up that list. Um, because I haven't included it because it isn't always applying. Like, you know, you've got Doc Colton in there. He is always going to give that 240, uh, that bonus 260 dam uh, Let me start that again. Doc Colton is always going to give that 260 bonus HP to whoever has the lowest HP. That's just the way his skill works. It always happens. Doodle, on the other hand, it's only if they're less than 50% health. So it's the same as Sir Kazmi. He's only generating that bonus armor if they're less than 50% health, uh, 40%. Same with Jargle. So I haven't included those extras on the situationals. So on that note, uh, let's take a little bit more of a look at that bonus healing. So the card states that for heroes who have got less than 50% health remaining, they gain an additional 350 HP of healing. So the way this works is at the time of triggering his special skill, all allies who have got more than one but less than 50% of their health gain a total of 740 HP in healing. So basically, all the allies who actually need the extra health the most, they're the ones that gain the bonus healing. 
I should also mention that both the base and the bonus healing do drop off substantially when it's not at 10 out of 10 skills. So specifically, it drops off by 15 and 9 HP respectively. So at level 6 out of 10, which is the point when you've not put any 5-star skill books onto the hero, the base healing is only 330 HP and the bonus is 314 HP. So drops off by about 15, between 10 and 15% um, on the two things. So this is also the case for every healer. It's not unique to Doodle by any means. So I'm just pointing it out as something to be aware of. So yeah, in overall though, with his healing, he is doing a fairly hefty direct heal. All right, it's no getting around that. The next part of his skill, if we move on from the healing, uh, is the ailment shield, which spe specifies uh, all allies are immune to new status ailments for three turns. This effect cannot be cleared. So for me, this is actually probably Doodle's best and most unique feature. There are better healers out there. Most of them do cleansing, right? You could see on that list, there's so many uh, healers who are better than him in terms of a direct heal. However, no other healer in this game provides complete immunity to new ailments. Actually, I'm not going to say that as no other because I can't actually remember off the top of my head. But if there is another one, there's only probably one or two of them. So he is very, very unique. But the fact for Doodle is that it is a guaranteed ailment shield for three turns, which is absolutely huge, right? There's so many things which are classed as ailments. You've got mindless attack, charge block, silence, damage over time, charge speed down, dodge down, attack defense, attack down, defense down. You know, there's so, so, so much more. All of those things get blocked straight up. It also works really well because it blocks fiend effects as well. So, you know, it blocks accents, um, fiends, um, accuracy debuff, you know. It blocks the um, <laughs> it blocks the buff blocker from Jainsaw's um, fiend. So, it's also very powerful from that perspective as well. So, very, very, very powerful effect. There is only one thing to note, and that is the that the ailment shield is somehow, for some reason, it's classed as a quote-unquote defensive buff. So what this means is that for heroes who can bypass defensive buffs in their special skill, they can still apply their ailments, even when you're supposed to be immune to them. So two notable cases where this applies is shutdown and sidestep. All right, you've probably seen those heroes before. I personally strongly disagree with this i really fail to see any reason why immunity by its very definition it means you are immune should be compromised all right i don't like it it also to me goes against the classification of a defensive debuff uh, sorry defensive buff because for a long time sgg across both puzzle combat and empires and puzzles for longer before what this phrase meant was it defensive buffs were buffs which specifically improved a hero's defense stat and ailment and immunity in no way modifies the hero's defense stat all right so i don't agree with this i hate it but i am pointing it out okay so just because it says that they resist all new status ailments for three turns is not the case because it is a defensive buff and it can be bypassed by sidestep shutdown and heroes of their ilk. So I need to move on. It genuinely annoys me every time I think about it and every time I experience it in wars and raids. So the final part of his skill is the full team cleanse. So cleansers are hugely useful. All right. So there's more of these. So the more of these that you have, the better you're going to be able to counteract the myriad of enemies who actually apply ailments to your heroes. The combination for Doodle, which is the cleanse and the ongoing ailment shield, is actually awesome. It gives you that immediate cleanse of ailments and then also effectively three more turns worth of passive cleansing as well. So really great on Doodle, but not unique to him. It is common to most healers, uh, most five-star healers. So overall, I really genuinely do like Doodle. Uh, he isn't as effective as a healer as some of the ones like Jocasta, Colton, El Coyote, because a portion of his healing is locked away behind a condition. So in a vacuum, when you look at him as just a healer, there are better options available. However, this conditional healing works really well for Doodle because when it does unlock, it unlocks for those who need it most. It's not being wasted on heroes that have already got, you know, over healing or too much HP. The cleanse, nice and nothing special, but 
it is very unique because it's combined with that element immunity, which he grants to himself and all of his allies. So couple that with his family bonus, which is then also the chance to reflect ailments back to the enemy. Um, and he's very, very good to counter ailment heavy or ailment reliant defense teams. So for Doodle's grading, I am going to give him an A grade for war and raid attacks. You know, very good hero, great support to your team. For War Machines, I'm going to grant him a B. Um, main reason for this is that red War Machines typically have a hefty DOT ailment attached to them. Um, so being able to cleanse that, heal, and also resist is very good. Um, for Eventing, I'm going to give him a B. And the main reason for this is a portion of um, the score is tied to the health. Um, so at the end of it, there's a health bonus. So you can heal, therefore you get more points on that front. For War and Raid Defenses, I'm going to give him a B+. Plus. Um, probably best suited to a flank position in order to support your team. Healers don't tend to make good tanks, generally speaking, and when they're in the wing, they tend not to be able to fire early enough to actually influence the battle. That's sort of too far gone by that stage. So yeah, B plus uh, in the flank position for a defense um, grade. In the three tournament settings, so you've got Bloody Battle, no point giving him a grade here. He's a healer. You'd be somewhat foolish to be using him um, often in that tournament setup. Uh, for buff boosters though, I am going to give him an A and a B plus for attack and defense respectively. Um, does generate A buff for our, everyone and you know he's still a healer, so very good support capabilities in those formats. For charged attacks, I am going to give him an A grade and a B plus again. Uh, he does go from 44 up to 65 speed in this tournament setting, so quite a hefty bonus to his speed. So Overall, that comes out as being an A- for his attack grade and a B plus for his defense grade. And that concludes the content that I have for this review of Doodle. Um, as always, this is just my personal opinion. I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback on these heroes, so please do jump down to the comments section leave me a note. I try to read and respond to as many of you as I can. If you did enjoy this video and found it to be useful, as I said, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel uh, and all of that. But most importantly, share the video around because if it's useful to yourself, chances are it's also going to be useful to the people you play with as well. Thank you once again for tuning in and joining me for this review. I do hope that I will see you again soon, but until then, good luck, stay safe and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.